floor joists, our wall stud, and our rafter are all lined up. And what that does is oftentimes eliminates the need for a double top plate on that wall. What's up guys, welcome back to the NS Builders Podcast. Today I'm gonna to talk about three ways that we can combat this rising lumber price. Number one, advanced framing techniques. So this is something that we're actually exploring on one of our projects right now. We're about to start construction on it. And as we have been, you know, we talk about all the time through our pre-construction process, we're basically volleying this pricing and design ball back and forth. And of course, as everyone is seeing that pricing for lumber has shot up. And when we started the project, we were looking at this as a very traditionally framed home. Um, and what we decided to do is we kind of hit the brakes with that, went back to the engineer and questioned, hey, can we explore the advanced framing methods? So some of the advanced framing methods, you know, and this is something that is open to interpretation and working with your engineer and architect, but rather than, you know, a traditionally framed wall, which would be 16 inches on center, um, meaning every 16 inches you have a wall stud, we're bumping that up to 24 inches. The nice thing is a lot of the, the insulation that we use, you know, if we're using bad insulation you know they come in 16 or 24 inch bats um you know on top of that it's also stack framing so if our floor joist is you know basically our floor joist our wall stud and our rafter are all lined up and what that does is oftentimes eliminates the need for a double top plate on that wall when you look at a wood frame wall typically you see it two pieces of timber at the very top it's your double top plate and that way if the rafter doesn't land on top of your wall stud well, it, make, it, it, it is able to transfer that weight over to another stud where if it was a single plate, you run the risk of that, you know, essentially bowing, I guess, um, would be the, the, the one way to put it. So we went back to the engineer and, and questioned this. We also questioned the way the foundation was um, reinforced, had a lot of steel in it. Um, we, you know, met with the, the concrete contractor, steel prices have also went up. So we went back to the engineer and asked, what is driving the additional steel? Is there a way we can reduce it? Is it because of code? Is it because of, you know, poor site conditions? Is there something that we can do in preparation or, you know, to avoid the need for all of this additional steel? So it really comes back to, you know, going back to the engineer and questioning these things and seeing if there is an, another opportunity. You, you guys know that I always try to question, you know, yes, it might be the easiest answer, but is it the best answer? And in this case, especially with rising material prices, we want to make sure that we're questioning those things and working, not that, I, I guess questioning is probably sounds pretty negative, but collaborating with our design team, our architect and, and structural engineer to make sure that we're going through this and considering other options. And what that allows us to do, going back to the advanced framing, is to reduce the amount of lumber that we're using on this building, which allows us to not only get a better R value in the wall because we have more insulation and less wood, but also use less lumber, which costs less money. Now let's talk about using less lumber. Prefabrication panelization, you know, working with a panel, a panel contractor. I'm going to give a shout out to Mike Riley down at Cape Cod panel. He gave me a tour of his factory. Uh, and when I was there, they were, they had a house being built and he pointed over to a 55 gallon bucket um, and said, that's the scrap from building one house. Um, and you, and you, and you realize what he has done and what him and his team have done is basically optimized everything. They're reducing the amount of scrap, you know, immensely. Think about how many dumpsters are on a job site when someone frames a house. He's putting this all in one trash can because they're ordering, you know, longer length lumber um, and they're running it through a saw. In this case, they have a, a saw that basically automatically, you know, takes, a, you know, say it's a 14 foot two by four. Um, and they're looking at, you know, the, the, the cutlass because the cutlass is, is done in the computer and that cutlass has every piece of two by four that they need cut on that job. And that computer then optimizes the best way to cut all of those studs out on, out of 14 foot two by fours. So it's basically just going through automatically cutting all of these things. And then you, you end up with a little one inch slug at the end. So if you're using less lumber, you know, to fabricate something, again, you're driving the cost down. So I think panelization has an awesome opportunity in, in today's market to really take, to really shine because you are using less material. You're also, you, um, you're also working within a shop environment. So you get to really control the quality, thus less time on site. You're not impacted by weather. There's so many benefits to that. Um, but specifically to the rising lumber cost, 
it's you're using less material and package that with advanced framing well now you can work with your panel contractor and get this thing to be really lean on the lumber usage the last thing i think is really interesting is using different materials and you know lumber is driving up steel is driving up everything is driving upwards but we also you know here in you know I'll just say America, we, we do a lot of timber framing. Uh, I think down the south does a lot more masonry, but this is an opportunity where, at least for us, you know, exploring different options of what other materials are out there that we could use in place of lumber. You know, in you know, there's and there's a mu there's multiple layers to this, right? Where it's you can be framing a house, you could be building the envelope of the house with a different material. You could be doing you know reducing the amount of interior trim because of wood material or using plaster moldings I'm not saying that they're less expensive i'm just saying that there's opportunities where you know you could be considering different materials to accomplish similar things you know due to the rising price so for us you know we are we're looking at certain we're looking at certain parts of our build and considering how do we reduce our our usage of lumber how do we reduce our usage of material in general because, you know, when pricing, you know, say something is, you know, relatively, excuse me, inexpensive, you know, you're, you're almost not tied to it as much where it's like, nowadays, I feel like if you were on a job site and you threw a two by four away, there'd be t 10 people snickering at you kind of saying, man, like that 10, that two by four just cost me $11. Like, you know, it used to cost me two. Don't throw that thing away. It's worth gold. And you see all, everything on social media, people, talk, you know, flexing their stuff saying, hey, I got a piece of OSB. I know what I got trying to sell for $2,500, you know, joking about all this stuff. But there, there's some there's some fact to that. And the fact that the matter is that we are being more cautious with our spending and being, you know, more aware of the usage. And, you know, so that's in, in some ways one benefit of uh, I, I, I tread lightly there one benefit of the rising cost is that it's making us more aware of our usage of material and making sure that we are actually, you know, using the material to its its fullest potential and not getting into this mindset of just this, the, the material being throwaway. And it's making us question these things. And I know, you know, for us as builders, you know, us questioning you using less material, it's trickling out, you know, through a lot of these builders, how do we build a, a you know, these uh, and more inexpensive home, how do we use less material? Can we replace these materials? So that, you know, is something that's really interesting. We have four new construction projects in design and getting ready for construction right now. And we're really considering all of these things. Um, and, you know, in next week, I want to talk about uh, the material, some of the materials and how they relate to health and wellness. That's another thing that has really been important for us for a long time, but we really haven't talked a lot about it because I feel like we're still in the infancy of learning it. But, you know, I realize that I feel like maybe we all are and there's a lot to learn there. So stay tuned next week and we'll talk about that. Thanks for listening, guys. We appreciate it. And uh, make sure you check out the new episode of Site Visit as well as Revealed. And we'll catch you next week.